Hey, what's up, ladies? It's Alex from Mindful Attraction 2.0. And in today's video, I'm, we're going to be talking about five signs that you haven't healed yet. This is more about if you've been out of a relationship or you've been hurt, you've been, um, you've been neglected at one point or another in your life. If you see these signs in you, it means that you still haven't gotten over them, right? Now, it's not a bad thing because if you see these signs in you, it means that you have a lot of room to grow. It means that overcoming this will provide you a lot more benefits than never having these kind of problems. You see know what I'm saying? So it's a good thing if you actually go through this because it'll force you to use the tools that you have already in your mind in order to improve upon yourself. But if you don't have these signs, you have nothing to work on. You see, so that's why it's actually good to have these kind of things so that you actually have an excuse to use the, the the arsenal of tools that you have in your mind already disposed. Because once you understand how powerful your mind is through overcoming this problem, you'll then be able to believe that you'll be able to overcome other problems because you overcame this problem. And that's how your self-esteem um, rises up, your confidence goes up by simply seeing a challenge and overcoming it, all right? So I'm going to show you, if you have this, it means you need to watch the next video I'm going to post. Um, so with that being said, said let's get started all right so healing so healing is um healing is about being over isn't about being over your ex or forgetting completely about them you see so let's say let's say somebody dumped you getting um healing your heart is not getting over them we we've all gotten over our exes but that doesn't that doesn't mean that they didn't leave an imprint in our minds and heart that affects us until today. You see, we all have relationships. Actually, not me, to be honest with you. But most people have relationships that where they gotten over that ex. But as a result, they developed certain belief systems about men that cause that self sabotages them in future relationships. You know, let's say somebody, some guy cheated on them. They they got hurt. They got over him. But that fear still lingers on because you're afraid to experience that because you didn't experience the pain because you suppressed it. You see, so you understand that if this happens again, you're going to have to experience that one thing that you've been trying to avoid. So that causes you to be more defensive and that causes you to close down to guys and you begin to set barriers. And most guys will just run away from you. You see, so this is something that's unconscious because you can't help it, unfortunately, but you can't help it because it's unconscious, but now I want you to become aware of these things in you. The first step is awareness, not fixing it. Awareness. All right. So I want you to become aware of these traits in you. And if you do have these traits, then wait for the next video because we have something because me and you, we can have to have a little power. All right. Me and you can have to have a little power. All right. So the first one. You have negative emotions towards your ex. That's the first one, right? Um, I'm not talking about feelings, feeling emotion for your ex, but rather I'm talking about feelings of hostility and anger. Um, these feelings come as a result of feeling that you, like you can't control your life and other people are responsible for where you are in your current life. This, these emotions come from feeling of, of helplessness and thinking that there is permanence in the world, all right? And that causes you to believe that what you see is what you'll continue to get. So you get resentful because you're saying it's not me, it's just how things are. I was born into the situation. This is the victim mentality that one develops when they put all of their faith in someone else and not in themselves. A lot of people think that hating their ex is okay, but it isn't. Um, that hatred is a reflection of one's emotions towards themselves. Being over someone is uh, is all about forgiving and having compassion for the other person. In, in in the state of compassion, there's no room for hate and creates the necessary room to heal. You see, so if you feel those negative emotions towards your ex, then you just you, I want you to begin seeing them as a child who was hurt. Imagine as though your ex was diagnosed with a brain tumor and only has three months to live. And, be, and, uh, and, and his behavior was actually as a result of that brain tumor that's going to take his life in a couple months, right? Imagine as though that's the case. Now, it, having that in thought, how do you feel towards your ex if that was the case? Right? You feel more compassionate. Boom, that emotion. I want you to continue med to meditate onto that. Like literally take five minutes a day and just imagine as though that's the case. You're going to begin to condition your mind to feel that way towards your ex. And that allows you to heal. Kind of crazy. Um, number two, um, you have a higher need for control. Uh, when one when one feels hurt or like the victim in their life, in order to avoid additional pain, you begin to feel that you begin to feel the need to control your life more than before. You also resist anything that doesn't confirm to your strict 
expectations have you like have you ever encountered people who just need to be who need to have who need things to be their way or the highway those people who are unbearable to work with or be around why because they aren't flexible and there is no compromising with them you must do things their way or they'll cause havoc you see in a relationship if this becomes your defensive mechanism for pain then you encounter men who are always in a state of defensiveness because you 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 yourself are defensive because you're always trying to control everything how they are right for example my aunt right she's cool i'm not talking shit on you aunt you know tia te amo tia <laughs> right <laughs> she'd be like ese muchacha porra está en ese youtube y hablando de mí mira habla con tu habla con tu hijo ese mal criado <laughs> <laughs> no i'm kidding um so my aunt, she always needed to control everything. Like, um, like when I would, um, when I would make make ramen, you know, ramen soup. She'd be like, "Do it like this." I'm like, "What?" I'm like, "Aunt, I know how to make ramen." She'd be like, "No, put it, put it halfway, put it halfway to the fire, put it halfway." I'm like, "My bitch, what you talking about, man? I'm putting it hot. I don't want to wait." No, put it this way. She will always ask me for that. It's because she always had the need to control, right? And so that comes when you're always defensive because you feel like if you don't, if things aren't this way, you'll feel emotionally unbalanced. So it's kind of like a, it's, it's kind of like playing that bajangles, like slowly putting everything up. It has to be perfect because if something's off, the whole shit will collapse. You see, but that's because you are afraid of experiencing the pain that's inside. And one wrong move, you experience it. And that makes you very sensitive. Um, the third one. You are more defensive. Not healing, um, not healing means being in pain. You see, being in pain means trying to avoid feeling more pain, um, which means you see the threat of pain at every corner. You then gear up with your mental armor and attempt to control your life so so to avoid the pain that traumatized you in the past. Um, if not, you'll find a reason to argue about everything. Your body will grow stiff and rigid, and you'll slowly push people away. Um, whenever, whenever you don't heal from a pain, you're consistently feeling the pain at an unconscious level. So unconsciously, you're resisting. Unconsciously, you're saying, fuck, I wish something would change outside so I don't feel this inside. So you're constantly blaming the outside. You're constantly looking out for threats. You're constantly seeing pain everywhere. Because that's how, the, that, that's how your unconscious is, is, is that's how you're, that's what you're feeling at an unconscious level, pain, right? So I called you to be defensive. And you find arguments where there's no arguments. You somehow create an argument. You know, you begin to have that one thing that I call having the punch me face. You know the punch me face? The face that you just, some people just have that punch me face that just, who just assholes to you, you know? That's what you begin to have. You just begin to provoke people. That's because you're provoked yourself. Because you're in pain. You see, most of this comes because you're trying to avoid pain at the, at the end of the day, right? And in the next video, I'm going to show you how to fix that, right? But that's not number three, right? Um, number four, there is, not, there is not acceptance behind your longing for them, right? Um, there's nothing wrong with having feelings for someone. The problem arises when you resist the fact that you're still not over them. Don't lie to yourself. Be honest. Clearly what's inside you and accept it. Um, don't try to say, oh, I'm over him, right? Don't try to do that. You want to be honest with yourself. If you haven't gotten over them, it's okay. You see, you want to face that because it's, sh it's kind of shameful to still like someone, you know? So it's important to face that face to face so that you're able to face your shame. You're able to face the, 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 the parts of you that you find negative and just be there because you haven't done that. So you want to do the opposite sometimes. When you haven't gotten a result, you want to do the opposite and see what happens. Um, so if you're still if you're still lying and acting like you haven't gotten over them, but deep down there's pain, deep down you long for them, the last thing you want to do is lie to yourself because then that stunts your growth as an individual. Right? Um, number five, you still wake up in disbelief. Right? And this is another sign that you still haven't healed. Um, if it's been months after the relationship ended and you still wake up in disbelief, it means that you're still having a tough time moving on. You haven't accepted it. Nothing's, nothing's wrong with that, but you must face reality and accept that it's fucking over. You have to do that, right? The feeling of disbelief is an underlying resistance to reality. This will cause you to be stunted in, in the past and unable to move on into the future. If you believe that you haven't healed from your past relationship, then the best thing to the, then it's the it's best to use that pain to grow. You see, practice mindfulness and use your pain as a spiritual practice. 
this will help you grow from your experiences. And I'm in the next video, I'm going to talk about that, how to do that, right? But that's the first step, is noticing what's going on, noticing that you still haven't grown, noticing that you're still looking for the same guy, looking for, um, like, that you're still looking for the kind of guy that broke your heart, trying to redeem yourself, trying to find a guy that reflects the other guy so that hopefully you could, you could like, mentally masturbate into redeeming your self-esteem by saying, oh, you know, he kind of really looks like my ex, you know, so if he likes me, I mean, you know, I'm good now, you know. That, trying to, using that as a way to feel better is not going to work because those things will always disappoint you. What you have to do is go in yourself is, is, and face whatever that is that you don't want to face. You see? Anyways, it's Alex from MindfulAttraction.org 2.0. Um, don't forget to comment and subscribe and hit the notification button. You know that little notification? Tap that, right? Um, you know, tap that, tap that. If you want one-on-one -on -one coaching, want to get like one-on-one -on -one advice from me, go to Mindful Attraction 2.0. And also, if you want the monthly program, the Coach in the Pocket program, also go to Mindful Attraction. That works like in the game coaching. You'll, be, you'll, get the, you'll see the links on the links below, all right? Anyways, take care and have a good day. Bye-bye.